Luda. Now I may not be the worst or the best, but you gotta respect my honesty. And I may break your heart, but I don't really think there's anybody as bomb as me. So you can take this chance and- Welcome to the wonderful world of chemistry, where ionization... Welcome to the wonderful world of chemistry, where ionization is actually breaking up molecular compounds and dissociation is breaking up ionic compounds. Woo. So first things first, what we're going to talk about is dissociation. Dissociation is the breaking down of an ionic compound in water. Water we're using as a solvent just because it's an aqueous solution then. So what we're going to do is we're going to break a solid ionic compound, something like sodium chloride, which is just simple table salt, and it's a solid. So when we dump it into water, what's actually going to happen is those water molecules are actually going to surround the sodium chloride. Okay. So what's happening is because water is polar, it has that negative end with the oxygen, which is more electronegative. And we have the more electropositive charge on the hydrogen ions. So what actually ends up happening is the oxygen, the electronegative oxygen, is really attracted to that sodium ion that's a positive ion. Okay, so the oxygen molecules get attracted to the sodium ions. And what happens on the other side is the chlorine, which is a negative ion, is going to be attracted to those hydrogen ions. So in that way, the water actually breaks apart the sodium and the chlorine, creating the ions. So we have sodium, and because sodium is a group 1 ion, it's going to have a plus 1 charge. And because it's present in water, we're going to have aqueous solutions at the other side. So we're going to, have, we're going to produce an aqueous solution. And also, we're producing a chlorine ion that is also an aqueous solution. Okay, the key here is after solvation happens, we still have to have a balanced equation on both sides because we're going to use that eventually in the stoichiometric ratio to calculate the concentration of the ions. So we're going to put a one-to-one -one ratio right here because there's one-to-one. -one. If at a time there's going to be two-to-one or something like that, if it's calcium chloride, then you're going to have a 2 in front of the chlorine and a 1 in front of the calcium. Now on the other side of the spectrum we have ionization, which is the reaction of a molecular compound, which is usually an acid in our case, that reacts with water to form a hydronium ion, which is H3O+. Okay, so what happens is you have something like acetic acid, which is CH3COOH. Okay, that's an organic compound. Acetic acid, it's vinegar in real life. Okay, and what happens is it actually reacts with water in the equation. So water has to be part of the equation. And what's going to happen is that acetic acid is actually going to transfer the hydrogen ion to the water. Okay, so it's actually breaking up and transferring its hydrogen ion to the water. That's because this oxygen is super electronegative, and when it's actually reacting, the hydrogen is giving up because it's an acid. Okay, so what's going to actually form is now a hydronium ion, which is also known as an acid molecule. Okay, H3O plus is an acid molecule. It's a lone hydrogen proton, and it actually is transferred onto the water molecule. So what happens is we're producing H3O+, and then whatever ion is left after we've gotten rid of that hydrogen from the acid. So we're actually left with CH3COO. And because it's lost one hydrogen ion, what's going to happen is its charge is now going to be a negative. Okay? Again, this is happening in the presence of water, so they both become aqueous solutions. From there, we're going to be able to calculate, because of the stoichiometric ratio and the balanced equation, we can calculate the concentration of acid due to the fact that that acetic acid solution is actually ionized. Eventually, we're going to use ice tables to calculate how much of it's actually 
ionized, and that's in the Chem 30 curriculum. For Chem 20, we're just going to use the 1 to 1 ratio and then use our ice table directly to calculate the pH. Okay, so again, dissociation is the breakup of a ionic compound, and the ionization is a breakup of a molecular compound, usually an acid, turning into H3O+. So that's it. That's our quick and dirty little summary of ionization and dissociation. Just a reminder, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. Luda. Now I may not be the worst or the best, but you gotta respect my honesty. And I may break your heart, but I don't really think there's anybody as bomb as me. So you can take this chance in the end, everybody's gonna be wondering how you deal. You might say, this is ludicrous, but tie your crew, tell her how you feel.